Anyway, I guess I should talk about the most recent adaptation. I don't really want to. Not because of the show itself, but because the discourse is, frankly, exhausting. On the one side, you've got the dumbest people in the world mad that there are some actors who aren't white on the show, or that a girl is a good fighter and they're yelling at Neil Gaiman about it? Again, dumbest people in the world. On the other side, you have the very legitimate concern that this Tolkien adaptation can only legally use material from some of the books, books that barely touch on the era the show is set in, so most of the show has to be made up from whole cloth. And that exacerbates the issue you get with any Tolkien adaptation, the fact that all this lore was created by one man, and now a team has to figure out how to filter it to a different medium and capture that man's spirit without that man's input. But on the plus side, you do have the fact that the Tolkien estate worked much more closely with the creators of this adaptation than just about any other Tolkien adaptation, but that's still not the same as the man himself working with the creators of this adaptation. And, oh yeah, then there's the Oliphant in the room that this Tolkien adaptation is being funded by the actual, real-life Sharky. This is all the stuff you have to wade through before you even watch the show. Oh my god, this discourse is exhausting. And then and then, you have the uphill battle of first-time showrunners being tasked with making modern prestige mystery box television and condensing the events of an entire age into a much shorter span of time, when really the best way to cover the Second Age would be an anthology series, so that we can really spread out the time frame and not need to follow the same characters in every episode. We already have plenty of episodes that regular characters don't show up in. This was an option. I mean, basically, the entire Harfoot subplot in Season 1 could have been a two-part episode on its own had it not cut to all the other subplots. Hell, go in the opposite direction. Each race or kingdom of Middle-earth could have gotten its own TV series. But barring that, each season could include, like, a handful of Numenor episodes, a handful of Moria episodes. Like, there were ways to do this that would cover the vastness of Middle-earth without really compressing it and making it feel so small. But whatever. For whatever reason, these were the decisions that were made, this was the show they were tasked with making. And hey, I talked just last week about how I liked when Jackson compressed the timeline, so compressing the second age down to a five season arc isn't entirely a deal breaker for me. So I watched the first season of Rings of Power. Do I like the show? I like it enough to wish that I liked it more. There are things that I really enjoy in it. I enjoy the breathtaking vistas, seeing Numenor and Khazad Doom in their former glory. I like all of the actors, and I like most of the character relationships. I'm legitimately invested in the friendship between Elrond and Durin, and the developing relationship between Arondir and Bronwyn, and the sisterhood between Nori and Poppy, and they're taking care of the stranger, this whole Iron Giant, Frankenstein's monster dynamic they've got going on. I love Adar as a villain. I think he's great. I love the Harfoots, I love the Dwarves, I love so much of what's going on, and then there's just so much other stuff that bores or annoys me. I spent the entire season just having zero feelings about Halbrand, good or bad, until the final episode when the feeling I had was basically, oh. And while I liked seeing Numenor itself, the Numenorians as people seem kind of stupid. Elendil and Muriel are the only ones who seem to have a hint of the Numenorians of legend. I'm sure Isildur will grow into his own, but he's not there yet. I was impressed by the Numenorian landscape, underwhelmed by the Numenorian people. Speaking of growing into their own, I really do dig Warrior Galadriel, but I wish it was tempered with Galadriel's actual wisdom, because boy does she spend most of the season being blinded by revenge, a trait that I could see taking Galadriel for maybe a moment, but not for this long. And I suspect that they're setting up an arc to have her grow into her wise self that we all know, but she should already have more wisdom than this. But there's still a lot of what I love from Tolkien and Tolkien adaptations in the show. Tolkien's often contradictory themes of great men rising to the occasion and small acts from humble people turning the tide are both at play here, and I think they're both handled well. And yes, there are other things that don't feel Tolkien-esque that take me out of it, but that's true of just about every Tolkien adaptation, no matter how good. That is handsome, Orc. Ultimately, this first season had some high highs, though not nearly as high as the highs of the Jackson Rings trilogy, and some low lows, though not nearly as low as the lows of the Jackson Hobbit trilogy. 
I liked it enough to keep watching next season, and I hope it gets even better. I think every single problem that I personally have with the show stems from applying modern sensibilities to this lore. Now, I don't mean making it woke, because if that's legitimately a thing you're complaining about, don't worry, you'll be old enough to get a learner's permit someday. I'm talking modern, capitalistic, studio-driven filmmaking sensibilities. Trying to reach all four quadrants, drive engagement, all those good boardroom buzzwords. I'm not definitively saying that the problems were all from studio mandates. Maybe this was the show the writers wanted to make. Maybe it's even the show that told Tolkien estate wanted, but the sensibilities that led to these decisions, whoever made them, were influenced by the way modern content is. And as much as I love a lot of modern shows and movies that are made with these same sensibilities, marrying those sensibilities to Tolkien's world felt hollow to me. But that's the cultural landscape this show was made in. Just like all these other adaptations were made in their own cultural landscapes, with all the good, the bad, and the confusion that entails. And as such, even if I don't love all the results, or even if I think the attempt itself may have come from a misguided place, I can still appreciate the attempt to filter Tolkien through this lens, just like I can appreciate all these other attempts.